On today's wrestling news, John Moxley makes history. Huge Stone Cold Steve Austin Mania 40 plans were scrapped. Got massive changes to the bloodline. And two top stars are set to take a bit of time off from WWE. Are you ready? Are you ready for the news time? Yes, my name is Phil Chambers and I am back from Philadelphia as a Phillies fan now. Who knew? Uh, and I'm joined by Gareth Morgan to talk all things wrestling news on this fine Saturday morning. But up first, last night, John Moxley made history now he obviously hasn't been on awtv sort of in about a month uh because he's been off wrestling for cmll and new japan pro wrestling and it's that last one that he kind of made some history with and he has now become the first person to win the wwe aew and iwgp world heavyweight championships the sort of huge company triple crown i guess and he did it at windy city riot in chicago by beating tetsuya naito um, now, this isn't obviously the end of uh, John Moxley in New Japan. He got attacked by Ren Narita straight away afterwards, uh, which will obviously set up his next challenger going forward. But then they also have Forbidden Door with AEW at the end of June. So it's likely, probably, I assume anyway, that he will go into at least go into Forbidden Door as the IWGP champion. But a huge sort of milestone that I'm actually... It's kind of shocking no one has actually done yet, considering AEW's been around for like five years now, um, to win the yeah, WWE, AEW, and top prizes in all of these different countries, co- countries, companies. Um, it's a huge, huge milestone, and it's a, a massive coup for John Moxley, so well done him. Yeah, just when you thought the other Shield boys had all the headlines, John Moxley turns up and goes, I'm the only one with the belt, I'm the only one with the world title, so yeah, yeah, fun, cool, cool stuff, I mean... It gets people talking about New Japan, which is something that's not been happening an awful lot recently. So that's yep. a good thing. That's a good thing. I always, always like just, just other wrestling promotions getting a little share of the spotlight. So it's, it's all good. Seems like, like it's a, a wise move for AEW and New Japan coming into obviously Forbidden Doors and things like that. Uh, be interesting to see yeah, if, he, if he ends up maybe defending it at Dynasty. I don't think he's on that card yet, is he? The, the AEW Dynasty card. No, so yeah. that could happen. You never know. I might be there as well. So we will keep an eye on that, what the plans are for the John Moxie and that belt. But speaking of plans, whoa, big old plans that apparently were very close to happening at WrestleMania 40. Where you were, my friend, Phil, where you were. You, you could have yeah. seen something incredible because, as you will obviously remember, when you were there in the main event at night two, out of nowhere, a gong went off and The Undertaker popped up. And everyone was like, wait, what, 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 what's happening here? Like, John Cena had come down before that. And everyone was like, well, we know what's happening now because there's been all these, like, teases, things on the side of trucks. Stone Cold's going to come out. He didn't as The Undertaker in a bob hat is what it is. So that happened. But now Dave Meltzer has actually said in his uh, latest edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter that, yeah, the plans were Stone Cold. They, 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 they were trying to get Stone Cold. They earmarked Stone Cold for that particular position. He probably would have come down and had a big stare down with the rock and then stunned him and all the great stuff. He probably would have run him over with a quad bike. It would have been incredible. Uh, that was going to happen. But they couldn't reach a financial agreement, is, is uh, the, the quote that we got there. So he was earmarked, but then they couldn't get that, uh, fi- that financial agreement agreed. And so they brought the Undertaker in because the dead man will always do what's best for business and he'll just turn up and do whatever he needs to do. So there you have it. Like we, we all thought, we all felt, we all speculated, and the, the feeling was on the night that, oh, it's going to be Stone Cold. And it felt like WWE obviously were edging towards that as well, but it just couldn't happen because, well, apparently. They didn't offer him the money that that maybe he wanted, which is insane. How do you not offer that man all the money? <laughs> I'm just yeah. It is ludicrous for that specific moment as well of getting the Rock and Austin back in the ring together after God knows how many years. Uh, it would have been incredible, and genuinely watching that live, like it kind of it felt like that was the plan. Like as people were coming out, it was like oh Austin's going to be next. Austin's going to be next, uh, and just I was the desperately desperately wanted to see the rock massively oversell a stunner live and in person because mm-hmm. that would have been like one huge wrestling tick off the list of things to see in your lifetime uh but it would have been an amazing moment uh it was fun obviously still with the undertaker mm-hmm. um but in terms of like yeah the sort of logical steps of who was coming out it would have made a bit more sense probably for stone cold um, but it t- I don't think it took anything away from that match. It was pure chaos energy, uh, and it was wonderful. And it was pretty much everything I was hoping for from a stupid bloodline rules match in terms of just buck all of the nonsense humanly possible and throw it into this. And it was quite wonderful. So yeah, it would have been amazing. It would have been a little, nice little cherry on top, but it doesn't take away anything from the actual match itself, I don't think. 
Um, but last night, speaking of carrying on from this match on SmackDown, uh, we had some massive changes to the bloodline. Now, Heyman and Solo and Jimmy all came out to the ring and Heyman was kind of explaining why Roman attacked Seth during that match instead of beating down Cody, saying that he just, like, 10 years and finally sort of got his revenge on Seth Rollins and that kind of emotion just took over in the moment and it ended up costing him the match. Um, Now, as he was kind of saying all this, Solo interrupted Paul Heyman. Uh, and spoke about how there should be consequences for losing and uh, con- that uh, losing sort of needs change. Uh, and it kind of looked like he was talking, saying this to Paul Heyman himself, who got very, very scared, but then he kind of moved Paul Heyman out of the way. Uh, and he hugged Jimmy Uso and said, you're my brother and I love you. And then he walked away from him and a hooded guy attacked Jimmy from behind. Now it turns out the hooded guy is Tamatonga. Uh, obviously we have had our own issues with Tamatonga in the past and attacks. He choked me out during a live podcast once. Uh, his dad you almost murdered it. You, Simon you Miller. It. You deserved it, Phil. Yeah, you deserved probably. it. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, mixed feelings about this one. I'm not going to lie. Um, but then they kind of all did the acknowledge me fingers. I guess that's what they're called in the middle of the ring. Uh, and during that, Paul Heyman kind of went to like call Roman Reigns on the phone. And then Solo like grabbed his phone, chucked it on the floor, stomped it, and then ordered Tamatonga to go and get a chair. He got a chair, he put it over Jimmy's head, put him in the corner, and they did the hip attack right, in the, right on Jimmy's noggin, I guess, uh, in the corner of the ring, taking him out. Uh, and then they kind of pose and walk off at the end. So this is kind of... Massive changes to the bloodline, whether this is them kicking Jimmy out or whether this is just them sort of having consequences for your actions kind of thing. And whether they'll sort of keep Jimmy around, that is, well, we'll have to wait and see, I guess. Uh, But Tamatonga is officially in the bloodline. And yeah, as much of the history as we have had with Tamatonga, if you want to see all that, you can just put Tamatonga in our page and you will find plenty of videos of him. Well, yeah, butt in his mouth and pretty much destroying us and beating us up and, yeah, attacking us. Uh, <laughs> he has worked so very, very hard for this. He's been in New Japan for a very long time now. Uh, he is a, he's secretly a nice guy behind the scenes. Uh, and, yeah, much deserved. Uh, huge congratulations goes out to Tamatanga for this position. Um, but, yeah, interesting things in the bloodline. Roman Reigns is going to be out for a while now, it seems. Um, so, yeah, we'll have to wait and see what kind of overall changes this means going forward and how this group is going to be presented. I feel like this could be a massive thing now for the, the Bloodline Saga. Obviously, going forward, it needed it after after Roman's particular story. Like, you got Cody's story finishing, Roman's story of being the all-conquering champion. That's ended now. So you needed this fresh injection of, of just talent and, and everything else, a, a, a shifting dynamics. You needed that uh, to really carry this story forward over the next couple of months. May, it may all lead to, I don't know, the Usos maybe joining forces with Roman, taking on this next, like, this, this, this other part of the Bloodline that you could fracture the Bloodline, he could have inner factions, like all this stuff. It, it's it's intriguing. More civil wars, more of the, all the rest of it. I am very happy, and I'm always happy because I I only realised this as I was watching SmackDown. I, my, my mind suddenly went to, oh, what happens to Paul Heyman now? Because like, we, we, if Roman's gone for a while, like I, I don't want to lose my Paul Heyman. I love my Paul Heyman. So he, he, as soon as he popped up, I was like, okay. So he, he's getting something else as well to really get his teeth like sunk into, like drama wise. Like he's he's really. Just I don't know. He's, he's putting in some good performances. Really, he, he looked terrified <laughs> throughout all this. So yep. I'm so compelled and excited for what's going to happen next. I did not know that that was going to be a sentence coming out of my mouth after so long in this Bloodline saga. But they've, they've done it again. They, they've got me hooked once again. I want to see what happens next. But speaking of like what's going to happen next for certain wrestlers within WWE. We know now, actually, uh, again, from the Wrestling Observer that's just dropped the most recent edition of it, that two particular top stars, they're not going to be seen on WWE television for a little bit. Uh, one of these stars we know, roughly, has been reported what, like, how long they're going to be away, but the other one we're not really sure. But these stars, the husband and wife, the duo that is Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins, they've had a big old WrestleMania season because, obviously, Becky's had a book release, she's been in the Elimination Chamber, she's had to fight Nia Jax a few times, and then she fought Rhea Rip 
basically with like strep throat, whatever it's called. Like she was just really ill and just just so many things. She's a Wonder Woman, all right? She that that's just Becky. And then you got Seth, whose knee got destroyed on the way to WrestleMania, and then he had to wrestle in the main event and then wrestle in the opener. So like there's there not much time there between those those matches. He had to wrestle a big old opener against Drew McIntyre, and then he was in the main event. He, he was he was the shield for Cody in the main event. He's had loads of stuff going on. So both of them are now going to take a bit of time off. Uh, Seth, apparently, his reason for taking time off is his knee. His knee's still a bit, uh, not sure right now, and they probably do need to rest it up for a couple of weeks, which makes a lot of sense. Make sure that knee's back to a real 100%. I think he'd said, obviously, in the lead-up to WrestleMania that it was 100%, but he was probably just saying that just to make him look like a superhero and everything else. But he is going to have some time now, probably around four weeks. I think that's what Meltzer was saying. Um, he's, yeah, four weeks just to really rest it up, make sure he's back in a, a, a good position. But it's not exactly known uh, how long uh, Becky is going to be out for, like how, how much time she's going to have on the sidelines just resting up. They can have as much time as they want, really, let's be honest, because they have they have been two people who have carried this company on their backs probably over the last year in particular. They've, they've done some incredible work and they've been showing up, they've been putting in shifts. So let them have a bit of time at home with the, with the, with the baby and just, just, just rest up and just come back stronger and healthier. Because yeah, they'll always have something in exciting, and intriguing to do uh, in this WWE landscape, and they, they've they've earned it. What a WrestleMania they've had! Yeah, absolutely. You should definitely kind of normalize this kind of thing of just like come in, like tell like a big long storyline, and then like take a little bit of time off because mm-hmm. like people need to <laughs> rest, especially in a business mm-hmm. like this that's so physically demanding uh, in terms of the travel schedule and the wrestling and everything else that goes along with it. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, just take a take a little bit of time. If more people sort of did this more throughout the year then like it'd give other people like little bits of shots for those mm-hmm. like months that people were off um like shuffle the card around a bit and then you get excited for the person to return and i think it's just it's yeah it's just good things all around in terms of when when this happens so kind of normalize this behavior definitely within wrestling uh, and i hope they sort of take the time they need to sort of get reset and come back better and stronger uh, than ever and i'm sure they will both of them are incredible talents uh, as shown by their WrestleMania seasons, they were both very much at the top of this card. Uh, so yeah, it's yeah, good stuff, good stuff for them. And yeah, yeah well soon, all of them. Yeah. Uh, so that is it. Uh, on a personal note, I just want to shout out a massive thank you to everyone that we met over WrestleMania weekend. Everyone that just came and said hello on the streets of Philadelphia. Uh, everyone that joined in on the ups and downs after all of the WWE shows and everyone that came to our live show. Uh, it was genuinely one of the highlights of our career at What Culture. It was one of the best things we've ever done that live show. So thank you very much to everyone for being so lovely and just coming out and saying hi uh, and bringing good vibes. It was very, very nice. So thank you for that. Uh, and if if you want, you can follow us over on Twitter. That's what you can do. Uh, you can follow me at Phil My Chambers, and you can follow Gareth at GMorgan04. And you can click this video down in the middle of the page thing, wherever it is. Here? Yeah, go there. No, here, go there. Yeah, probably. No. Uh, to continue no. your YouTube journey. And have yourselves a bloody good day. Bye-bye. <laughs>